Hello and welcome to this training video on the basics of data mining. Now in this video I will take you through briefly uh, opening up the data mining screen and setting up your first filter. If you're using ShareScope Gold, the way to access data mining is via the little pickaxe and shovel icon on the toolbar at the top. Uh, alternatively, you can go to View, Change Window, Data Mining. If, on the other hand, you use either ShareScope Plus or ShareScope Pro, you can access the data mining uh, screen by either viewing the preset data mining layout, for which there's an icon here at the top, or if you're creating your own layout from scratch, you can open up a data mining window by right clicking on the screen, going to new window and selecting data mining. For the purposes of this video, I will be using the data mining screen on ShareScope Gold. Uh, however, everything I'm going to show you now will be transferable across all three versions of the program. So when you open up the data mining screen, uh, it will always open up a filter. Uh, by default, it will be the last filter that you are looking at. Uh, you can always see what filter you're looking at uh, by looking at the title here in the top right hand corner of the filter bar, this gray area on the right hand side. In, uh, if you want to select a filter and open up a, a, a different filter, we press the select filter button uh, and press the uh, new filter. Now here we're just going to create a new one. You can of course choose one of the existing ones, uh, but if you want to create a new one, hit new filter, give it a name and click on OK. Uh, I'm just going, calling it test in this case, you can call it whatever you want. Um, by default, ShareScope will uh, set the source list to LSE shares. Now, the source list is the list that ShareScope is going to use to uh, analyze and uh, report back on the results. So if we, uh, the, the filter is going to be applied at the moment on the list of London Stock Exchange shares, uh, we could apply the filter on just the FTSE 100 list or any other of the existing lists in the program, including one of your own portfolios. But for now, we'll just stick to uh, LSE shares. On the left hand side, you will see a list of shares. In this case, it the uh, because the filter is uh, at this moment blank, it will include uh, the entire London Stock Exchange uh, share list. As we add criteria to the filter, the uh, list on the left hand side is going to get shorter and shorter as uh, shares drop out from the results for not matching the criteria that we'd set. So uh, there are many, many options uh, that you can choose for in the uh, as a criteria. I'm going to add a couple of very simple ones. Um, so if we hit the add criterion button, a dialog box will open up uh, divided by category on uh, for the type of criteria that we're looking for. So uh, price will be uh, have anything to do with price movement, so percentage changes or things like that over periods of time. Uh, the next two options are for financial results. Uh, then we have volume and technical analysis, so anything to do with uh, technical analysis, so uh, volume changes, moving average changes, MACDs, RSIs, etc. Uh, ranking sector will look uh, will allow you to data mine uh, not on the absolute value of a certain financial data, but on where the share ranks compared to other shares uh, in a uh, in a particular sector. So you only want to include a, the top ten shares by profit, for example. And other criteria includes uh, anything that is not in the criteria above. So let's set up a very quick filter uh, that will uh, check for um, dividend yield. So if we select headline uh, ratios, results and forecasts and hit next. Uh, and then we select yield. And then we look at historical yield and hit next. And we look at result. We want to actually data mine for the actual numerical value and hit finish. Now a criterion box has been added uh, on, uh, on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, you'll see the title of the uh, criteria, so in this case we're data mining on historical yield. Um, and there'll be two values in the box. 
Now, this is the range of results which we deem to be acceptable. So we only want shares for which the historical yield ranges between these two values. Uh, shares group will automatically fill in the two values with the smallest and largest value it finds within the source list. Uh, so if you want to change the uh, minimum value, so we're looking for, dividend, uh, for shares that have a dividend yield of at least 4%, we change the number to 4 and hit the Enter key to change it. Uh, alternatively, you can use the slider bar at top. But if we put the number in, we could be more precise. In case of dividend yield, uh, I like to put a maximum value as well. It avoids all the shares that have a uh, high yield simply because their price has plummeted. So I'm going to put a maximum dividend yield of 8%. Now, the list of shares has gotten significantly smaller, starting from over 2,000 shares. Our list is now 214 items long. Uh, if we hit the add criterion button again, we can add another criteria. So this time let's look at the forecast yield. So we go again, select yield, and this time we select forecast instead of historical. And then we enter the same values again. So four to eight. And now a list of shares has dropped to uh, 90 shares long. So Share all the shares are uh, all the criteria are exclusive. So uh, a share for a share to be included in the list of results, it has to match every criteria listed on the right hand side. In this point, there, at this point, uh, uh, there are two criteria, but there is no limit to the number of items that you can add. Obviously, the more items you add on the right to, uh, on the uh, criteria list, the shorter your list is going to become. So at this moment, those ninety shares are all the shares in the London Stock Exchange that have a historical yield of between 4 and 8% and a forecast yield of between 4 and 8%. Now, there's a couple of points uh, I would uh, like to make. Uh, first one is this little uh, green button here that each criteria has. Now, if we press the button, it will change to red, yellow, and back to green. Now, changing it to red is very simply, it disables the criteria. So if you want to temporarily ignore a particular criterion, uh, press it so it turns to red and you will only see the results based upon uh, all the other active criteria. So it just uh, temporarily disables it. Changing it to yellow uh, does uh, uh, activate the criteria, but it does something a bit special. If the criteria is set to green, it will find all the shares for that have a, a dividend yield of between 4 and 8% and will exclude all shares that don't have a dividend yield. So for which the result isn't zero, it just doesn't exist. If we set it to yellow, on the other hand, it will include all the shares that have a dividend yield of between 4 and 8%. However, it will include also all the shares that, for one reason or another, do not have a yield value. Now, this is particularly useful if you're data mining on, for example, uh, say profit change over five years. So you want a profit change over five years to be at least 25%. However, you don't want to exclude shares that don't have a value simply because they didn't exist five years ago. If you set it to green, the shares that didn't exist five years ago will be excluded because they don't have the five-year percentage change value. If it's set it to yellow, those shares will be included. So that's quite important when you're data mining, especially for fundamental data. Now, the other thing that you'll probably have noticed is uh, these X, Y, and Z buttons here in the corner of each criteria. Um, these are used to display the results on the scatter graph. Now, if you don't have it activated, uh, you can activate the scatter graph by right-clicking anywhere on the screen and selecting the graph option. Now, what we get here is a scatter graph, which uh, uh, often uh, confuses uh, some people of exactly what it's representing. Um, it's representing quite a lot. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to 
graph design right click and go to graph design uh, and disable some of the options just so I can get the uh, get it in its simplest form what it's doing it is plotting the uh, in this case the two criteria on the x and y axis of this graph so as you can see yield historical is being plotted on the x axis and yield forecast on the y axis and each of these little triangles is representing one of the shares uh, the selected share uh, in this case amic foster wheeler plc is the one highlighted in red if you click on a share on the list it will change the highlighted triangle or you can simply click on one of the triangles and it will change the selected share on the list this will allow you to see uh, if there are any uh, clusters of results so it's fairly useful for uh, statistical analysis probably more so if you're uh, creating criteria based on fundamentals more than technical analysis uh, I'm not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail about this, but my advice, if you're interested, uh, have a look at the graph design dialog box because there are many, many statistical options. Um, if you don't want to see the scatter graph, simply right click on it and uncheck the graph option and the thing will disappear. You can access all the all further options for managing your filters by simply right clicking anywhere on the uh, filter uh, panel on the right hand side so if we right click you will see uh, the options uh, like uh, copy filter if you want to create a copy and then modify it rename filter de uh, delete filter uh, lock filter lock filter will simply prevent you from accidentally modifying anything about it um, and things like edit filter note edit filter note will just allow you to add a quick note associated to the filter Uh, a little description that will appear just below the name of the filter. So uh, here ends the video on the basic navigation around data mining. Uh, on our website, you'll find more videos and more tutorials uh, that will help you create specific filters uh, for, for example, uh, technical analysis like moving average crosses or things like that. Uh, you will find them in the training zone section of our website. And uh, as always, if you're stuck or have any questions, uh, please give us a call or send us an email.